I mean, Joe's not here, so the O'Reilly stuff was really for him, you know. Joe Namath is set to join us. My buddy Charlie Reno checks in again. He goes, Babe Ruth, Muhammad Ali. And he's right. They're all icons. But what I'm getting at is there wasn't one home run by Babe Ruth that changed his life. There wasn't one fight. Namath, again, great career, Hall of Fame, did a bunch of very important things, including the merger. But one game, one game changed his whole life. And I think the guy that comes close to that, Joseph Abood says, what about Jesse Owens? In the, uh, in the Olympics, World War II. And I think that's, good. That's, th- good. That's, that's the closest thing to what I'm talking about. So name its book is out all the way. My life in uh, four quarters. He's been a guest of mine many, many, many times back to the sports line days and a guest of Bernie and Sid many times. And he's back now with the release of this terrific book. Here he is, everybody, the all-time great. Joe Namath, good morning, Broadway <laughs> Joe Willie. How Hello, are you? Oh, good man, I tell you what, uh, Sid, Bernie, uh, you guys bring back some memories going back to that sports line and so many years of the shows you've done. I'm just thrilled to be here with you, man. Well, we're thrilled to have you. You know, I made the point today, Joe, that, you know, you were such an important figure for football. You know, great years, great games against like Raiders and LaMonica before the Super Bowl, and you were so instrumental in the merger. You were a deserved Hall of Famer. But in the 50-plus years, Joe, that I've watched sports, and all the icons I've watched along the way, I can't think of any athlete that gained more from one win, one game, one event, than you did from Super Bowl three. Is that fair to say? Well, it's fair to say from coming from you, you know, but for <laughs> me to say that, man, I got to remember what got us there, you know, it was a, yeah. a long road from childhood to getting in that position as a team, man, so... Uh, but I did. I, I hear what you're saying about that one game, and it was so special because of uh, what I've been told, and I believe it did for football. I mean, the truth is, Joe. If God forbid, and of course you had the guarantee, which was amazing. You're a 17 point dog. We're going to win, and you won, and we're so happy you won because we all, everybody loves Joe Namath. But if God forbid you don't win that football game. I don't believe you live the life of celebration you've lived the last 50 years. Well, if God forbid I, I would have been come into this world as a lady, there's no telling what I'd have been doing. <laughs> Somewhere, whatever. That, that is business is uh, a little, a big little word, you know. Right. right. Yeah, but the fact is you, you did it. It happened, and uh, that's the bottom line. Listen, Joe Namath's going to be at the 92nd Street Y this coming Tuesday at 7 o'clock with Mike Greenberg to discuss this fabulous new book, Joe Namath, All the Way, My Life in Four Quarters. And uh, Joe Namath, I have to say, for the first time, I believe, uh, you've written extensively about, uh, well, it start, started with your bad knees, you started drinking, you talk about drinking and smoking, and uh, all of that adversity that you overcame. You, you write candidly about all that stuff. Well, you know, life is an ongoing education if you allow it to be. And uh, I've been open to coaching since I was a child, man, and I'm still learning along the way, boy. Uh, dealing with the sports, dealing with injuries, dealing with alcohol, you know, uh, there's so many people, uh, aside from myself, that are going through things. Uh, uh, it's really what I went through is not a whole lot different than what millions of people have, have been through. And uh, I've been lucky enough uh, to stay strong. You know, I got an education and... Uh, I learned what I needed to do, uh, and that was to get rid of what was potentially killing me. And uh, so far, things have been great, man. Great. Yeah, God bless you. 74 years old. Listen, Joe, I've been to rehab twice. You know, I I know I'm in recovery my whole life, you know. I get it. Um, But And I don't want to make excuses for any of us. But growing up in, in Pennsylvania and then playing football in Tuscaloosa and then at 26 years old owning... Broadway in New York City, if you're ever going to make an excuse for why somebody would fall into some bad habits, Joe, from Pennsylvania to Tuscaloosa to the biggest star in the world in New York City, kind of makes sense. 26 years old, no? Wow. Uh, You know, that word excuses, it's like something else everybody has, you know? Nobody wants to hear about those things, but... uh, yeah, we just didn't know any better. We were learning. Uh, we're going back uh, uh, 
uh, 70 years. Uh, I remember my grandfather giving me my first drink of alcohol. I was only six to eight years old, you know, but it was just a sip of some rock and rye. Uh, people <laughs> didn't know how treacherous uh, alcohol was, at least we didn't. And then being a, an athlete, uh, getting some injuries and dealing uh, with injuries, uh, we, we, we were, I guess, uh, petted a little bit uh, and, and taken care of with some pain pills and things that were needed at times. Uh, it was all an education, man. I, I'm just lucky to be a survivor. I know that. And uh, with the book, I, 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 that's one of the reasons I did decide to, to go ahead with this project because it wasn't my idea to start with. But uh, going way back, man, uh, uh, underdogs, people are out there having a tough time every day, and I thought I'd have some things to say to maybe help them get, get through some tough times, to get tough, you know, cop an attitude and make a change for the better. You know, Joe Namath, again, the book all the way. You uh, Going back a little bit, you were uh, actually a very good baseball player, a very good basketball player, but you actually received some offers from Major League Baseball, but you chose football in the end. Well, you know, uh, I said, Bernie, hey, it was still a time that we listened to our parents, uh, in a sense. I was uh, 18 years old. I had a chance to sign with the Cubs. I had a chance to sign with the Orioles. Uh, St. Louis got in touch with me, but uh, I wanted to play baseball, but uh, simply put, my mother <laughs> wanted me to go to college. There you go. Listen, I, went, I started my college career at Miami in 1984, and the head coach of, uh, of a couple of quarterbacks you may have heard of, uh, Bernie Kosar, Vinny Testaverde, Jim Kelly, Mark Ritt was a guy named Howard Schnellenberger. And I love the story that it was actually Howard that got you to go to Tuscaloosa to play for Bear Bryant. I love that story. You know, Joe, one other thing about um, going back to your days and talking about the drinking at 26 years old, only New York City. Another curse that was put on you was that you were too good looking. <laughs> and, and I know you talk about this in the book, but not just alcohol, but women along the way became sort of an addiction for Joe Namath. Again, great-looking guy, most famous athlete in the world. That became an issue too, right? Hey, I appreciate that addiction, if that's what we want to call it. I appreciate the beauty today, yeah. man. I'd be looking around and seeing some ladies and not yeah. only with physical beauty, but how they conduct themselves, too. I am so appreciative yeah. of that trait for the opposite sex, man. That's and, great. Uh, hey, listen, I remember, I, I remember, I remember the old days, Joe. I remember those commercials with you and Farrah Fawcett doing the Brute by Fabergé commercials, Joe, when I was growing up. That was great stuff. It was wonderful stuff. Yes, thank you very much. I enjoyed working with some people, too, like Ann Margaret in the film industry, which was wonderful, and on stage, too, with uh, some wonderful ladies, Misty Rowe. And, and uh, it was hard for me to focus on the job whenever <laughs> I was confronted with those uh, beautiful people. And it wasn't all, uh, you know, just good times, too, Joe Namath, the book All the Way. It was also... I mean, you were really plagued with some uh, bad knees. You had your knees replaced, and, uh, I mean, they really did affect you during your career. Oh, well, uh, no doubt. My senior year in college, uh, uh, the fourth game of the season, I was running around right in, and uh, I tore knee ligaments in my right knee. And uh, I was never the same since. I mean, excuse me, if I were a racehorse at the time, they'd have shot me, you know, it would put me down. Uh, but uh, learning to play and uh, never really uh, being the athlete I was prior to that injury, uh, man, I, I got lucky with the right uh, teammates, with the right coaches, and accomplished a dream. Wow. That as a young player in Little League Baseball, all through high school, you want to make the team. The dream is to get on a team and win a championship. And you did it. And, uh, you know, yeah, we you, did. you and Weeb Eubank and now Jet Bands have been chasing it for 50 years. And we'll get to this uh, Sam Donald team momentarily, Joe. But, you know, you, I was telling Bernie that you actually helped me start my career in this when you teamed up with Schmidt and Mike Levy at Sportsline USA. 
That was my first job in sports, me and Scott Kaplan. And you were so good to Scott and I all those years. And, you know, you're still an athlete. You were out there every morning, and I think you still are, hitting those golf balls up in uh, Jupiter, <laughs> Florida. How, how, what is your handicap these days, Joe? How you playing? Yeah, I'm playing the worst golf I've ever played, but I'm still a fan, and I get out there occasionally. Uh, but, but I remember that little office we had down there in Fort Lauderdale. You yeah. mentioned Mike Levy and our sports line team down there at the time. Thanks for bringing that up, man. Oh, that was uh, great. That but was... Golf, uh, golf is a great sport, and uh, I've never been a really good golfer, but I'm interested in the PGA that's happening right now out there in Long Island at at best pay. Yeah, now Bernie's got 25000 on Brooks Koepka to win. That's right. Well, you know, <laughs> if, if it were decided in one round, we'd have won already. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Joe Namath's going to be at the 92nd Street Wide this coming Tuesday, again at 7 o'clock with Mike Greenberg, to discuss the new book all the way. The tickets you can get at 92y.org, 92y.org. Uh, Joe, let's ask you about the current Jets, if you don't mind. I mean, they may be in a little bit of disarray right now. They just fired the uh, general manager. I mean, there's some bad blood between the coach, apparently, and Le'Veon Bell. The rookie quarterback, Sam Darnold, he had well, a so-so year last year. What are your thoughts? Wow, man, going back, say that, you know, a player in the locker room, uh, uh, all those things happening, players and coaches, uh, that, that, that shouldn't interfere with what they need to do. With, with, with what their goal is. Uh, I, I have been a Jet fan, and I've said this many times, I've been a Jet fan through the years because of the Jet fans. You know, they've yep. been with us. Ownership changes, players change, coaches change, but our fan base has been there, and we want to win. Well, I can tell you one thing. I, I don't know if even a, the most diehard Jet fan we have wants to win anymore than those players and coaches and Christopher Johnson. They want to win. So they're trying to do the right thing to win. And uh, we all get critiqued. Uh, We've got to make decisions, and not everyone likes them all. But you mentioned Sam Darnold. I think every Jet fan out there and throughout the league uh, appreciates his style and his work. His teammates certainly do. We've added some pieces to the team again uh, this year, both in the draft and out, uh, and through uh, a trade or two, uh, free agency that gives us some enthusiasm. Uh, but hell, these guys can get out there and beat anybody. They're all good players. They just need to learn to put it together. You need to learn what my college coach told us as freshmen. Keep your poise and discipline, and I'm going to teach you all how to keep from beating yourselves. Well said. Beat themselves yeah. by making mistakes and stupid errors as much as the other teams beat them physically or more often. Well, listen, uh, the Jets have come close four times. One game away, Joe, once with Richard Todd, once with Vinny Testaverde, and twice with the young Mark Sanchez. I really think this team is primed for big success. I think Donald's great. I really do. And you had Bell, and you had that big linebacker, C.J. Mosley, and a few other pieces. And I think the Jets could be a very, very surprising team inside the AFC this year. But more importantly, uh, you've done it already. The book is all the way my life in four quarters, and whether you're a Jet fan, a Giant fan, a Miami Dolphin fan, or a Houston Texan fan, everybody loves Joe Namath, and nobody more than Bernie and Sid. So thank you for today. Thank you, Sid. Bernie, thank you, man. Get, let me know any time you want to talk. I enjoy uh, talking with you. Thank you, We'll Joe. take you up on it. It was an honor. Thank honor. you very much, Joe Namath. Good luck with the book, thank and we you. really love you. Thank you. The great Joe Namath here on the Bernie and Sid Show. Been an amazing week. We end with a champ. We'll come back and wrap it up right after this.